What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna head over to the shop with Dad's car because today's the day to get that supercharger and that feed line all mounted up and maybe even do a dry start, see what happens, but let's get into it. so the object of today is to get the supercharger actually mounted in place get it fed we got to change the feed and I'm gonna go down there and I'm going to tap the oil pan so you're gonna watch me tap the oil pan one and three quarter inch down from the second bolt half inch over I already remember I still remember that stuff so me and cousin Paul are gonna get busy and maybe we might be able to actually hear the supercharger run having as much video as I can installing it but we'll see um, yeah it just takes 916 so we decided that we're gonna go ahead and mount this first I'm gonna hit this up with some brake cleaner real quick first now I gotta take all these dumb bolts off that I put on here but at least I didn't lose them you know radiators are like trays <laughs> Um, when I took this off, I put like all the bolts, I put all the bolts back in exactly where they came out at. So, and I actually added a couple because, you know, when you deal with used parts and used kits and stuff like that, you know, you're always, you know, you're always dealing with, you're at the mercy of the person that, um, that put it on before you. So if they didn't really know what they were doing, you know, things could be, things could be completely back asswards. So I'm going to go ahead and this one bolt actually sucks really bad on a supercharger and I always hated it and never understood that it's the, the second, second, it's like hidden underneath of the pulley. So I gotta stick these bolts in. There's like five or six of them that mount this bracket and put this thing in like place, you know what I mean? That it lines up with the front part of that pulley you know, and you'll see that again here when I get towards the end. Paul, uh, cousin Paul is going to pull this feed off right here. It's in the three-quarter rat a wrench, with, but he's got to be careful because there's a nylon oil feed there. He's going to stick it on the feed that feeds the supercharger, and it comes up and, and taps in here, and he'll be able to put that nylon back in. So I kind of got ahead of myself. I went ahead and put the charge pipe on, fit it up. Got the supercharger mounted. Cousin Paul's trying to get that pesky little oil feed out in the side of the block. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to doing the tensioner. It's hard to video that, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, we had to take the IAT, uh, the intake air charge temperature sensor or whatever. Um, you can see I moved it over here to the intake tube which is a good mod because um, uh, the lower intakes like to pull timing so we're gonna have to plug that back into the factory location so this tensioner is a little pita and it's hard to actually video this stuff and show you and installing it at the same time but they actually physically have a thinner headed bolt which you can tell the previous owner obviously didn't have it all the way seated so I gotta clean them threads up but it goes behind this dumb pulley, which makes no sense why they would put it there. But it sucks because I have to like, you have to like put it in like finger tight. And then you got to tighten the, 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 the pulley down. And then you have to set the belt with it loose until you get the other two tight. <laughs> Whatever. You get it. He got the, uh, the feet in. And we're going to go ahead and... Put the nylon oil attachment back in, and then we're gonna put the, he's got it clocked perfectly for the uh, supercharger feed. It's kind of hard to video some of that stuff, so. All right, so me and cousin Paul got this thing almost fed. Now we're at a point of no return. I can't even start the car without tapping that pan because it'll get oil all over the place on the ground, so. Since we've already changed all that. I'm gonna bring you over here Cause I got my old school trusty 
long disconnect for the AC or whatever because I got an FMU here that I have to mount. So I'm just going to sheet metal screw here. Um, we're going to have to run to the parts store and get a vacuum line to run to. Um, get a vacuum line to run to the block. But I'm pretty sure this is the return line because it looks small. Now I have to do some Googling because I have to clean these lines up and figure out what it feeds to. Let me see. Okay, so this is how the FMU works, folks. Got a vacuum. An actual FMU is a fuel management unit that restricts the return flow of the fuel back to the tank. And by doing that, it raises the pressure in the rails to accommodate for the boost, in a nutshell. What we have here is, for some reason, we have a return line that had already been modified and is long enough, just enough to stick in this FMU, because this is the inlet where my thumb's at that comes from the actual return rail. We mount the FMU here. We're gonna take the whole return line out and we're gonna put, me and cousin Paul gonna put this line in, which just so happens to plug right into the FMU. I don't know, I don't even know where that came from, bro. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna take this line out. This one will go from the fuel rails. This one will go back to the tank. So we have to actually make the other attachment that returns to the tank. So this is gonna restrict flow with vacuum. Let's get busy. So with a little stroke of luck, we ended up finding in my parts, I just explained to you what the FMU does. What we're gonna do, this is from the fuel rails and this line goes back to the tank. And this is what came in my car but apparently somebody along the time i don't know if this came with my parts car that if this came with the mustang or whatever apparently at some point in time somebody had the same idea and must have had the supercharger on at some point because somebody had already created a return line that goes to the fmu and the line that returns to the fuel tank for us so that's pretty amazing Yeah, I can't believe how lucky we just got. Let's see if this is actually going to fit on this fitting. So this is the return to the tank. Let's see if this thing actually fits. Let's check inside here. So look at that. It screws right on. So we now have the tank. That's not nice. Same thing with the rails. Let's see if this thing fits. This is really cool, it'll just go right in. I don't know, I'm not, I don't know if I'm down with this union here, but it is what it is. Look at that, saved me so much time and effort right there. I'm just gonna simply take a couple sheet metal screws that I got and go ahead and mount this. It ain't gotta be perfect. I don't plan on having a supercharger kit on here very long anyways. We're gonna have some fun with it and see what happens. Probably have to blow the motor up and take it off. We routed the feed, which somebody had made before. We're going to continue routing. We're going to plug it in right here. Um, a speed density requires you to run a check valve. A check valve has to go on a speed density, old school supercharged setup. You have to put a check valve on the BAP sensor because it can't see positive vacuum or boost or whatever because it would make it go crazy. You know, this is simply the check valve for the heater box and the, the, the vacuum reservoirs that are found inside of the uh, fenders for wide open throttle. I'm pretty sure the way it was explained to me is this check valve was used for people that when you go wide open throttle, there was still a vacuum source for some of that stuff to work. Do you understand? So we are going to use naturally a 30 year old Ford part for our check valve and that's what we probably should have did to begin with but anyways we're gonna get it hooked up just like i had said with some of the new vacuum lines that i do have and we're gonna hook up the fmu vacuum line and then we're gonna be done with that part and all we really need to do folks is tap the pan and drain it set the belt up and we're done is this vacuum for the fmu so what i'm actually doing here is routing because i'm gonna end up you know zip tying some of this stuff so I'm going to come underneath the map sensor to give it somewhere else to go. And 
I'm going to plug it up under here and it's going to be perfect. So the vacuum tree will use the FMU and absolute vacuum from here unkinked will be the FMU or excuse me will be the check valve for the map sensor. So I'm going to take my trusty tap set that I have here. I have a nice uh, set of them or whatever. And what, what I'm going to have to actually do is you're going to have to take, um, you have to go up in like increments. You see how there's like three years. You got to start with the small one and go to the middle one and go to the you know big one. And I'm going to have to stick this big one in there eventually to get the 3 8 tap, which is right here, into the hole to start threading. So I got to remove this. Uh, bracket that has the usually has the starter and the O2 sensor on or harness on it and it's going to be in my way okay so I need to measure from the first the second bolt back this is how I always did it from the lip of the pan about inch and three quarter down um, approximately folks approximately so I'm going to say it's about right there. And then it's about a half inch backwards. Or so. Approximately. Buy that in right there. I think that's a good spot. That looks about right. And if we mess it up, then we just have to pull the whole damn motor. But, you know, that's life. So what I am going to attempt to do is get this hole big enough with this punch to put this 3 ace um, tap in. And you can notice it's tapered. So I guess I'm going to show you how to thread it here in a second, but we're trying to make it big enough for this simple 3 ace barb, whatever, return. Let's go up to the bigger one. should be on the lift a bit more don't want to go too big or whatever there we go I think this is it yeah it's going in nice and tight now Let's check and see how close we are with my with my drain fitting here. That's close. I'm gonna see if this works. Might have to put the tab in there one more time. This might not catch. If I go slow, I'm, I might get lucky. And looks like I did. All right, so I just spent like an hour at Home Depot trying to figure out how I was going to do this. But the drain on the supercharger, it comes really close to the plate. So it's hard to get a really good hose clamp on so my drain won't like fumble around. Or my drain won't pop off. Now, I apologize for the earlier video. I haven't really had a chance to look at it yet, but I think I actually set the camera down on the cardboard that I was laying on, which kind of made it a little shaky. So if you see this edited or whatever, I do apologize at first. I ain't got a chance to look at the video or whatever. But anyways, this is what we got. I'm going to go ahead and stick this little NPT and this coupler. All I'm trying to do is extend this out past the plate because I can get the hose up in there, but there's not enough room to put a clamp around. And, and it be and me be happy with that. That way I can get the clamps on, the drain will be done, and we're ready to test. So I'm gonna be cycling the key on and off to see if I got any fuel leaks, and then it's time for the first start. I got the drain hooked up, got all the uh, the hoses on that we were messing with. We're gonna go go ahead and check this FMU. I already got the check valve in over at the map sensor. So we're gonna make sure that we're good to go here before we fire it. All right, so here we go. We're going to mess with this fuel and see if it works. Let's 
see any leaks. It's fired up. Thumbs up, success. 